In this video, we are talking about overhead pressing and lower back pain. And this is a video for all you low back pain folks you're not going to want to miss. Stay tuned. Hey, what's up YouTube? It's Coach Remy here. In today's video, we're going to be talking about overhead pressing and lower back pain. And I'm going to be sharing with you the most common mistake that I see people make when it comes to the overhead press and what to do about it to correct this mistake. This mistake can lead to the development of extension-based back issues specifically. So think of facet joint problems or a stress fracture if repeated over time, especially as you're using weight. So what is this mistake? Well, what you'll see people do is when they take a barbell or they may use dumbbells, any sort of overhead pressing, they'll take their barbell, unrack it, and as they press up, they go into extension. So if you look at my low back, as I go up, my back extends. So there's this big extension pattern that is created when you see people overhead press, and especially as they go heavy with the weight. And there's a few reasons that this may occur for somebody. So number one is inadequate shoulder flexion range of motion. So shoulder flexion is just the ability to get the arm overhead. But what you'll see happen with some people is as that arm continues to go over and over and closer to being fully overhead, there'll be limited range of motion here through the shoulder. And to get that extra motion, they're gonna get it through their low back. So what you'll see people do is when they overhead press is that they'll go up, 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 but to get directly overhead, they don't have adequate shoulder flexion range of motion. So they crank through extension in the low back to get that bar overhead. So they're not getting the motion from the shoulder, which is where we want them to get it rather than getting it from the low back. And that's going to create a lot of stress onto the low back. And if repeated over time, that can lead to the development of a low back injury. So why may someone have poor shoulder mobility? Well, typically the lat or the long head of the tricep may be short or stiff and that they may just have very depressed and low shoulders, or maybe their, their posture, they have a uh, large interior tilt, or just, they may be just stiff in general in those areas from doing a lot of pull-ups. So how can we address this? Typically, there's a couple ways we can incorporate some soft tissue work. So think of massage, maybe you're seeing a manual therapist, massage therapist, or you're just doing some soft tissue work on your own. So you're maybe foam rolling under the arm here or foam rolling along the lat, spending maybe 10 to 30 seconds. And you'll, you'll, once you do that, you may just notice a, a big improvement in your mobility as you get your arms overhead. And that could have carryover to when you do overhead pressing. So you can use that almost as a warm up or segment into your overhead pressing is just doing some soft tissue work beforehand to improve that shoulder range of motion. So you're getting that adequate shoulder flexion and you're not compensating through the low back or at least minimizing the compensation. So that would be Number one is just poor shoulder mobility and soft tissue work is one way to really hone in on that. Or we can even incorporate just some simple stretching through the lat here or even the tricep to increase the length of the muscle if it is short. So that's another thing to consider as well. So another reason someone may fall into extension is that they have poor poor control. They just have poor awareness of how to brace. And what will happen is because they're not bracing, you'll notice this big rib flare up. So the, the ribs flare up. And then when the ribs flare up, they crank into extension. But if we were to keep the ribs down by bracing and engaging the core, then that will reduce the chances of that extension pattern happening. We won't necessarily get the bar directly overhead if we, if we have poor range of motion, but it will prevent us from dropping into extension as we go overhead. So how do we correct for the brace? Well, one, it's just cueing, cueing the individual to brace properly. And that just takes some coaching, but also making sure that we're incorporating maybe some core activation drills beforehand, maybe a dead bug, maybe it's a back-to-wall shoulder flexion where we're just practicing this 
getting our arms overhead with a brace without using weight. So think about someone punching you in the gut, nice strong brace, arms overhead, nice and controlled. And then you're doing just maybe a set of eight to 10 reps of that and just learning to cue yourself, keep your ribs down. And then you can start building up and adding weight into that. And then finally, one last thing, or one last cue to prevent the extension from occurring is glute activation. So just by activating the glutes, you're now gonna reduce any chances of you falling into extension. So I'm gonna take my bar again, unrack it. Now I'm gonna engage my core, glutes, and then I'm gonna press overhead. So as you can see, I don't have that extension pattern occurring, but if I, if I don't brace now, I just relax, I have that brace occur, or I have that extension pattern created through the back. So for someone that's just looking to maintain the longevity of their low back, when they overhead press, and if the goal is to overhead press, do so without falling into that extension pattern, especially under load. Because as you add that load and add repetition in, it's gonna place a lot of stress onto your back and that's the faster or the quicker way a back injury can happen. So if your goal specifically to strength train safely and without creating a back injury, take these tips and cues and apply it to your overhead pressing when you're in the gym. So just keep those in mind. Then finally, I just wanna share with you one last tip. So if you're someone that maybe needs to work up to this, you need to work on your core control, you need to work on your shoulder mobility, but you still wanna overhead press. A safe way to do so would be with a landmine. So if you were to take a bar, you place it just on the floor into a corner, and then you can press forward with the bar. So it's a mix in between an overhead press and a chest press, but this is typically, I find the most shoulder friendly form of pressing for somebody. Now, the benefits of this, you're not, you're not required to get the same shoulder flexion. You just need to come to about here instead of up here. So the demands on the core are also less than on the back. And you're still getting a pressing effect with the bar here. So the safe, safer way to press, if you're someone that does lack sufficient shoulder mobility and core control. So. I just wanted to share those tips with you in this video today and explain overhead pressing and why it can create lower back pain in somebody if they're not careful. And also to give you a couple tips that allow you to also continue with your strength training, but doing so in the safest way for your low back. So that being said, guys, if you have any questions or comments about overhead pressing, be sure to leave them in the comments below. And also if you want more tips, more fitness tips, and if you also want my free guide, seven core exercises you should probably be doing to prevent low back pain, be sure to sign up for my newsletter on my website at remysovereign.com and there'll be a link in the description below. Okay guys, so that is it. And until next time, have a successful and productive day. Take care.